Mr. Beat presents Presidential, presidential Elections in American, American History. History. The 28th presidential election in American history took place on November 3rd, 1896. Turnout was high, and people were saying things like, This is the most important election ever. Yeah, right, as if they don't say that every election. Grover Cleveland's second term didn't go so well. For most of it, the country had been stuck in a severe economic depression. And while the populist movement was at its peak, with poor people pointing fingers at, quote, the man, everybody seemed to be losing money during this time, even the rich. The Republicans rallied behind a new face on the national scene, William McKinley, the former governor of Ohio. They nominated Garrett Hobart as his running mate, a former New Jersey legislator. The Democratic Party had generally shifted away from Cleveland to a more, quote, free city silver monetary policy, calling for inflation to help ease the economic crisis. In fact, they had adopted several of the populist ideas. At first, there was no obvious successor to Cleveland, and several candidates emerged, like old silver dick himself, Richard P. Bland, the former U.S. representative from Missouri. However, soon, another dude stood out quite a bit, mostly for his incredibly awesome speeches. 36-year-old William Jennings Bryan, a former U.S. representative and and lawyer from Nebraska gave his famous cross of gold speech at the Democratic National Convention. In the speech, he sounded very much like a populist, passionately attacking big city corporations and the gold standard, while calling for government relief for farmers and others hurt by the Depression. His speech was so dramatic that after he was done, some delegates carried him on their shoulders out of the room as if he was the quarterback who had just scored the winning touchdown. Needless to say, Brian got the nomination. The Democrats nominated Arthur Sewell, a shipbuilder from Maine, to be his running mate. The Populist Party also endorsed William Jennings Bryan, since his party basically co-opted their ideas, and so did the newly formed Silver Party so it was quite a fusionist election. Meanwhile, Democrats who were not on board with the Free Silver Movement formed their own political party called the National Democratic Party, also known as Gold Democrats because they supported the gold standard. They were more aligned with Cleveland and would absolutely not support Bryan. They met in August and nominated John Palmer, a U.S. Senator from Illinois, for president, and Simon Buckner, the former governor of Kentucky, for vice president. Palmer was 79 years old and Buckner 73, making the two the oldest combined presidential ticket in American history. The Prohibition Party split in two for this election. Some wanted to go beyond just the Prohibition issue, and so they went off and formed a different Prohibition Party. So basically the Prohibition Party had two tickets, Joshua Levering and Hale Johnson forming the traditional single-issue ticket, and Charles Bentley and James Southgate forming the more broad-based issues ticket. Let's get real here. McKinley and Bryan were the only ones who stood a chance. And so, this became a battle of the Williams. Unlike any presidential candidate before him, Bryan crisscrossed the country to campaign. He traveled 18,000 miles in three months. In just 100 days, he gave over 500 speeches. On one of those days, while he was in St. Louis, he gave 36 speeches in one day. By doing this, of course, he reached millions of people, but he didn't get much sleep and often lost his voice. He did draw huge crowds wherever he went, explaining in a hoarse voice that he left his real voice at the previous places he visited to keep firing up the people. Meanwhile, William McKinley mostly just stayed home. He didn't have to crisscross the country as his buddy Mark Hanna did all the work for him and brought the people to McKinley's front porch. Hanna orchestrated a masterful campaign that was successful at raising millions Millions of dollars, much more than Brian could raise. In fact, Hannah literally invented a new form of campaign financing that has been the norm ever since. He went straight to businesses to get donations, making propositions. The McKinley campaign was successful at making many businesses fear a Brian presidency. I probably should mention that Utah could now participate in this election because they were now a state. Congratulations, Utah. And here are the results. 
William McKinley won, becoming the 25th president in American history. He received 271 electoral votes and 51% of the popular vote. He did particularly well in the East and Northeast. William Jennings Bryan received 176 electoral votes and 46.7% of the popular vote. He particularly did well with farmers in the South, West, and Midwest. John Palmer finished third with just under 1% of the popular vote. Joshua Levering finished fourth, just over 3,000 votes behind Palmer. Garrett Hobart became the 24th vice president in American history. While Bryan's defeat was a blow to populist momentum, many of the ideas brought into the mainstream during his campaign would stick around long after this election. I'll see you for the next election, buddy. Thank you.